Cessna 172 with a pilot induced door brake error. Look at that, that's broke right there. That pilot broke that door hard. Why did you do that, pilot? Can you just double bubble it? I think so. Sand it? JB weld. Where's this? Right. See why right. we couldn't Where's this? Like, I didn't do nothing. That door over there broke. Just get in it, and then we'll speed tape it shut after you're in. You'll be fine. Can you label an emergency exit in op? Yes, if it's speed taped. <laughs> there got a parachute here you stay there and look at it i'm gonna go find the button that deploys it you just keep looking yeah ballistically deployed parachute are we sure this is a cirrus it's not a cessna it's a cirrus see right there that strut right there that's how you know yeah it's got a parachute it's a cirrus 182 it's a cirrus 182 that's what it is yeah. All right, we got a 182S in here and the angle of attack sensor, which is a dealer part on this bird, is not working properly. So we think it's the transducer in here. Let's go in the cockpit so you can see what it's doing. So there's the angle, hold on. There's the angle of attack sensor right there. It's booting up and then, come on. We have no lights, all right. now. So anyways, as you can see, it's not functioning properly. We're gonna do some testing on it. And I've never worked on this system before, so I don't wanna sound like a genius. I am gonna be learning as I go. Okay, so we got something here. Um, What is that? You know what that word? Ma Matinus Ma Manuel. I know, we're out of our depth. We've never read anything to fix something before, so this yeah, will be fun. Yeah, we fine. need a lead over here, please. We have a lead here, please. What is, what is this? What is that? Manuel? What are, I've never, this, this is uncommon. We've never had to do this before. This is like, I want, you can't ex just give us all these words and expect us to do things. Does Manuel work for Textron? Maybe. Is he available what, by, what's by phone? Manuel's number? If I call customer service, will they read this <laughs> to me? I don't There's not read. a single picture in there? Just throw it away. Hold on. <laughs> Ah, pictures. Oh, I see. We're supposed to drill here. <laughs> so, all the lights turn on when you first cycle power to it, and then they turn off. So, after it cycles through, it's blank after it's post run or whatever. And it says, if you press and hold the buttons on the indexer for two seconds, all reference marker lights will illuminate. Test system test. I don't okay. care. No, you be quiet, you. <laughs> if LED 6 or 7 are illuminated, replace both the indexer and transducer. And interestingly enough, um, we've got 6 and 7. And 6 and 7. So let's spray Micro X on the back of this Cat 5 cable uh, and then replug and repower cycle and see if that changes no, what down we do. Here. We just found these between the seats. This is how you're supposed to read. The FAA does not allow you to fly. If this is your prescription, there's no way. There's no way. They're not real. But this is like the Hubble telescope. They're not real. <laughs> you're right. They're not. Which begs the question, why is a pilot wearing fake glasses? <laughs> Wait, does it help you understand? No. It doesn't help at all. I think you have to be able to read first. <laughs> Microscope. Let's see. Hey. Was that it? Go hit the go hit the angle attack. Push it down. All right, it's going down. That working? All right, let it go back to the middle. Push it up. It's working now. All right, let it back down. Well, that was the easiest fix of our lives. Well, that should be in the middle. Right? Yeah, it should be in the middle. It's not. I wiggle it for a second. Oh, oh, there it went out. Hey, nope. It doesn't know what it wants to do. Go there and, and just tap it. Tap it. There it is. Shut up! Shut up!
Okay, anyways. I hate Garmin. That's why I fly planes with no instruments. Um, seems to be working now. I don't want to do a complicated fix if that is what gets it. Uh, what do you think? I think uh, let him call us back if it messes up again. Or we tell him that it's broken and we're going to need $10,000 to fix it with labor. Yep. That's what we should do as a responsible shop. Not 37 cents of Micro X. Well, that helps. Actually, if you put it right there. Check this out. We got a... What is this called again? Extra 300. Extra 300 in here. It's a good looking plane. Do we have to take the canopy off again? We do, don't we? That's a fun job. We got a pressurized fuel system so it can do flips. What's interesting is that every plane can do a flip, but this plane can do a flip more than once. Most of the time, if you do a flip in the wrong plane, it'll flip once and then crash. So that's pretty cool. Y'all took all the body off the aircraft. This is for weight reduction. Yeah. I see. New name and is Skeletor. It's weight reduction and cooling. It's a little hot in there. So. That's for that $50,000 bubble of a uh, shield. Cowling was supposed to put the body back on the extra last night. Where's he at? Here he is. Dad gummit, Kyle. Man, Kyle, come on, dude. Dang it, Kyle. Oh. What's happening, guys? We ready to put this cowling back on? Extras are so cool. Yeah, I found it after I broke it. That doesn't count. I wish all airplanes were this easy to inspect because you can literally get to everything. Avionics on that would be so easy. What are you doing in here? I'm oh, just an avionics install, you know, the normal. Why are there so many red wires? Power wires. Rachel, the whole thing is gone. Yes. It doesn't even have the yoke anymore. Is it Bluetooth fly now? Yep. All right, we'll come back when she's done. Do we be done tomorrow? Oh no. You'll be done by like 2.30 tomorrow. Yeah. Gotta go to the beach this weekend. With what engine? It's coming. I'll have it done. <laughs> weird. There's something weird going on there. I mean, that's pressed fit. That's yeah, done it's for. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be in place and no movement. And you can see how much movement. It spins all the way around with your with your uh, fingers. We're gonna need us a new wheel. And usually that's an indication that there's something wrong with the rim. So I don't know if the rim's shot or what. It's got a lip on it too. Yeah. So something in the bearing. As you can see, these are like no longer uniform. So they go to that control arm that goes on the nose wheel so we're gonna replace the shims basically from there down and get everything cleaned up before we put the stuff back on but that's also something to look out for like hey you're doing the nose shrug but also think about the shims and hardware because if it will focus now when we were taking this off we also noticed that the shims number 45 here 
were like super worn out. Let me go show you what those look like. So for whatever reason, a lot of people don't take this bottom piece out. It sits up in there and the bolt that goes through it goes through this fork. And uh, that O-ring in here is installed on the top side, which is down in that hole. Okay, obviously they don't want me to talk. Who's out there? Somebody. Goodness gracious. Quiet it down. Okay, so where was I? Here's the diagram that lays everything out. And here is the puck that we've removed. So the O-ring goes on the top side, but this sits down right here. Um, there's no way you're getting the O-ring out unless you remove this bottom piece, this bottom assembly. You see that O-ring there it looks like it's got a little cut in it. But what, for whatever reason, people don't like to replace that one. And I don't know why, but make sure you do because they often leak out of here. So usually if you've got fluid on the tire, it's coming from here, not just because of the struts leaking because the scraper and the O-rings worn out. All right, looks like the parts ferry just dropped off all the seals. We need to rebuild the strut. The guys did a really good job stripping all the paint yesterday. Um, when we rebuild struts, we like to take them all the way down to bare metal because a lot of the time the paint that's from the factory on these is really thick and it cracks and it can make you think that the fork is cracked. But in reality, it's just the paint that's cracking out. So they stripped it, took it down and they're gonna we're gonna paint it here in a second. They just got everything taped off. So always good to go through a couple extra steps on these. So what's going on with the Mooney? So um, the Mooney, the main main thing that happened was fuel pressure, overpressure was the issue. And so this, it never drops down to zero. It literally has no fuel on it right now. It should be a zero. Uh, there's your issue right there. Two missing screws. The vibration there probably caused the indication to be off by whatever it's off by. Don't these usually have a sticker for Cal? They normally do, but this one is the, that would be the original from install or from manufacture. And that was in 1966. So. These people in the 60s, they too busy smoking that reefer. They weren't doing no work. Was. And then uh, the second issue that this plane had that was just kind of, hey, handle it since it's in here was uh, the sky beacon over here. Uh, so uh, normally there's a sky beacon here. Uh, if you don't know what a sky beacon is, UAvionics makes a, it's a nav light, but it also has, um, it has ADS-B out. That works for it. <laughs> now we're never gonna fix it. But, uh, it does ADS-B out, but only out. Uh, UV, UAvionics also makes another corresponding beacon that does ADS-B in. But this one had a cracked lens and got water in it, ended up making it not light up or put ADS-B out. Uh, so we're, we have one on the way to replace it and we can show you what it looks like when it gets here. I gotta redo the video and they can see that it starts with an N. Oh no. All right, back in the Mooney, fuel pressure is reading zero right on the dot. Your manifold pressure ain't reading zero though, that's bad. That's a bad manifold Yeah, your manifold pressure is a 29.92, that's, it should be zero. Well, as a trade-off of fuel pressure <laughs> or manifold pressure, these guys want fuel pressure. That's good. So the whole door latch had to be drilled out. This is from the pilot that broke everything. He broke the door, slamming it. The CFI did. If I'd find him, I would... Oh, hello, CFI. Anything to say for yourself? We almost halfway fixed something today. Hey, you missed that whole thing, bro. So that's progress. Miss what thing? Harder! Again, we fixed one plane. Now we gotta get rid of the evidence.
gecko. Y'all gotta get him out. We can't kill him. That's Frederick. I don't think Frederick's gonna make it. All right, Tom Callen. Y'all, I just want to say, um, if you like the white monsters, they bake pretty good, they hit pretty hard. But if you want to try something different right here, uh, this stuff from Gill, man, when you drink that, it sure enough wakes you up. 